On this episode of Grassroots Garage, we have Troy's KE38 Corolla wagon. The wags is running a 5k, but Troy owns war speed and specializes in building engines. So this little 5k revs past nine grand and sounds epic. Morning, grassroots garage. We've got Troy from Warspeed today. Troy, thank you, mate. Thanks for your time, man. No, Tell us about you. your Corolla. Ah, uh, yeah, my my baby, my K38 Corolla wagon. Always wanted a uh, another one. I had a had a K30 when I was growing up, and uh, yeah, had a couple of them. Rode it off and put cars in hold for a while, and ski raced and go karted and business and family, and yeah, found this thing a few years ago and brought it and. Spent some time on it. Sick. So yeah. tell us the story of getting it home. Where'd you find it? I uh, found it in Toowoomba. Um, jumped up on Facebook one night, saw it, message a guy, bought it. Told my wife the next day I bought it after I already owned it. Uh, messaged a transport guy, I got it down here, and yeah, it was it was too cheap not to buy it. I, I think I only paid a thousand dollars for the whole car. Oh. Uh, it was a two owner, immaculate condition, just stock standard. Rexy, gotta be Rexy. Brian tires. Oh, and the Rexy. And the Rexy. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> I'm leaving that in. That's staying. Yep. <laughs> yeah, a 5K that we then basically started from scratch with it. Um, yeah, it's it's 5K. Got a set of H-beam rods in it. Um, still only got a Hypertech piston in it. Uh, a lot of cylinder head development. A lot of camshaft. Custom roller rockers for it. So I had Harlan and Sharp in America make me a set of custom rockers for it. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I then sent them to uh, Kelford and we'd done a, um, a moment of ignertia so we could work out the exact valve spring tension and everything. So it's got a lot of development put into it wow. for a very old school type of engine. The cylinder head is the, is the, the key to the whole engine. Mm -hmm. um, it was a brand new cylinder head, a brand new aftermarket uh, replacement cylinder head. Mm -hmm. um, but then, yeah, I'd done a huge amount of work on the cylinder head. Um, so it's actually running Nissan TB48 valves. Um, and then I've got 2J retainers and collets and GDR valve spring and a Cosworth valve guide. So wow. yeah, so yeah, it's a bit yeah. of a Frankenstein. So you um, just worked out what sizes looked at, were? Yeah, the sizes I could do. So we put new inserts in the cylinder head so we could put a bigger valve in there and mm -hmm. um, got a custom head gasket because we opened up the chamber quite large so that we can get the biggest valve in there to then, you know, we've notched the top of the bore so the valve could not be shrouding on the bore and yeah some some you know big block, big block chef technology thrown into a 5k and the the cylinder head combustion chamber's been welded and reshaped to look like an ls yes uh, so when you said you've done all this this cylinder head work is this all hand work hand poured oh. so there's 50 hours of cylinder head porting in the sink yep you're hearing that you're filming right now yeah. <laughs> 50 hours of cylinder head yeah. work there's a billet <laughs> space you'll see there's a billet spacer in between the rocket cover um that's because the roller rockers won't clear under the rocket cover, so that space yeah, there, we've, had, it, we've yeah. had to raise the rock cover up 20 mil yeah. to give it clearance for the big roller rockers that are in there. <laughs> so the factory ratio on these is a is a, a 1.5 ratio, and they tell me back in the day that the trick was for mini guys they would put K series roller rocker a uh, K series rockers onto a mini because a mini was only 1.2 ratio, mm -hmm. and a K was 1.5. So I looked at this and thought, well, if a K can go onto a Mini, surely I could put a Mini onto a K because you can get a lot of K, uh, Mini parts, but you can't get K parts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we started doing some measurements and I got some, some Mini rockers and it was sort of working, but it wasn't really working. So then I rang the boys in at Harlan Sharp in America and spoke to them, gave them all the measurements and, and he said, hang on, I'll go and get my notepad. And he dragged out his old notepad and he'd done a set of rockers once before for someone in America. Mm -hmm. um, so we ended up stepping up to 1.65 ratio. Um, so that's given me like, this lift on this thing is like 550 thou valve lift. To put that in perspective, it's about double what it would normally run. So Sick. it's yeah, in yeah. the same range of what a mild small block Chev would run for valve lift and more than what an LS would run from the factory. 
So yeah. we have massive yeah. amounts of valve lift. So yeah. when it lit, that means you can just dump more. So the valve is opening a lot further, so then the cylinder head can, can carry more flow. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that. So the, the, the cylinder head on my flow bench, by the time we finished with it, with the manifold bolted on, flowed a, a theoretical 200 horsepower through the, through the cylinder head. Yeah. Now, before I started with the cylinder head, it was at about 91 horsepower. So, yeah. 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 So has this been on a dyno? Yes, it's been on a dyno. What's, yep. what's its number? So bearing in mind, these things make about 35 horsepower at the back wheels. Yeah. Um, at the moment, it's at 145. Wow. So, yeah. 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 And that was at that was at about eight. Um, so we've got to do a little bit more fuel tuning with it. Um, but yeah, it's 145 at eight grand. On the road, it'll pull to 9,400. And then that's it. It just, it just flattens out. It doesn't go any further. Yeah. But say so I do want to build another engine and chase ten out of it, just purely just because. Yes. I want to. Yeah. Why not, man? <laughs> yeah. So, so these uh, five Ks, they're a, uh, the um, van motors. Yeah, right? fa forklift or out of a light ace van. Light yeah. Ace. So this was actually out of a forklift in South Australia. Oh, sick. Yeah. So I found the engine. I found oh, the block man. on eBay and then got it sent over. If um, you can tell some stories, eh? Yeah. Yep. Got two lives. Wow. So, out of a forklift. Yeah. So and then Western Clutch done a clutch for it. So it's got a single billet plate clutch in it so it's got a billet fly off a billet hat um, and a, yeah single plate clutch um, Scotty I, I spent about five hours lighting the original fly wheel and I walked up to to Western clutch at Scotty I said yeah I want you to make a, a clutch for it and he grabbed my fly wheel and threw it in the bin because um, he said you're not putting that in there if we're gonna turn this to nine mm -hmm. so yeah he he didn't like my hard work yep. no, yeah just <laughs> nine, man. I saw that with that rotary exactly, explode on the yeah. thing you don't want that man. Yeah. yeah sick bro uh, uh, yeah. yeah got a single stage external oil pump on there just because Corollas aren't, you know, well known for making good oil pressure. Uh, oh, hey, Mark, what do you know about Corolla oil pressure, man? <laughs> so, yeah, so we put a, a little uh, single-stage belt-driven oil pump. My mate Wayne Newby made all the Gilmer belt drive for it. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, Clearview oil filter, purely because I, I sell them, so it was just a bit of a wank factor to put the oil filter up there. We can put the tie gauge on there, blow it, and then we can see what the oil filter's looking like. That's so, sick. Yeah. Wow. Um, it's a Mitsubishi Sigma distributor that's been modified for it. Where are uh, you? Yep. Yeah. So, okay, cool. So that would be then, it's, it's got no points, it's obviously... Yeah, electronic, it's got an MSD box sitting in the, in the um, glove box. Um, yeah, it's got twin 45 Webers on it that we've modified the manifold and welded it and cut it and shut it and, yes. yeah. So we, what's with this bridge that's over here? What's the bridge was for the linkage system um, yeah. to get, because we... Uh, yes. it's, it's, it's again for me, sorry. Yes. So we had to get clearance, yeah. so we cut all the bottom of the manifold out so we've strengthened the top of the manifold yeah. on the top side. That's mad. Yeah. So the manifold's all welded underneath and in other bits and pieces to, to give it strength up the top here and, and to get a better port entry. Yeah. Love that. Yes. Yeah. Custom so, extractors. Yeah. Uh, what are these wheels? SSR Mark IIs. And yep. they're are like from the 80s? Yes. Yep. Yeah, so they're yeah. a genuine JDM spec wheel. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. Can you get replicas now? I don't know. I don't know whether you can get replicas. I just found them online, bought them. Um, and then I got Jason to Jason Lowe. Uh, yeah. So he powder coated the sanders and we got it all polished and... Yeah, restore them ourselves. Um, yeah, I just I just think they work on this car. Oh yeah, mate, yep. I'm so happy. I mean, most guys would say it never went away. I'm so happy that small tires, you know, wide, big yep. tire. Yep. Yeah, not, not 17 inches. I just got the original center caps for it the other week. Yeah. Like I said, a genuine um, center caps for it. I just haven't, I just haven't put them on yet. I'm just worried that I put them on. If I lose it, I can't replace it. So I've sort of got them sitting there. Um, Maybe just for shows. Yeah, so yeah. Benny got them for like Benny's Benny's custom works got them for me. Yeah. Um, and they're sitting there, but they're just they just I just can't put them on. I just don't want I just don't want to lose one on him because he went out of his way to get them to me. So <laughs> yeah. 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 So uh, this interior has been redone, obviously. Yep. Yep. And as once again, I wanted to keep that original old school. So the original seats. Um, when I had my original Corolla, my my observer when I was ski racing at the time, he retrimmed my interior for me. Mm -hmm. So I actually got him to redo this again for me now. So he's been a family friend for years. So I told him I wanted it old school, just puff the seats up a little bit, but yeah. keep it a, like I just wanted old. I wanted that. I say I wanted that period car, period specific. Sick. Yeah. Yeah. And yep. What's this wheel? Uh, yeah, that's not period specific. Yeah, no, uh, it's still sick. <laughs> yeah, so that's a say belt wheel because I, I do engines for V Sport. I got got to hook me up with a nice wheel. So yeah, yeah something a little bit racy. 
Yep. Why not, man? And there's that massive gauge down <laughs> yes. there. I mean, I, I love this sort of stuff because I've got a big automated gauge in the centre of my dash. I've got a whole big hole in the dash. Yep. I just love that sitting there. And that's the old school, like, you know, guys put them up here until they got defected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. There, you know? yep. Yeah, that's sick. Uh, beautiful, man. Can we just, uh, I think we'll look in the boot, back seat it. Um, yeah, just clean, huh? Clean and original. Is there a center seat belt? No center seat belt. No. Is that, that's, that's, that's how it was in the factory? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. There you go. The red, the red in the, in the, uh, set of, in the cluster. Factory. Really? Unbelievable, eh? Wow. I kicked myself at input red interior and red center is on the wheels now, but then I think it would have ruined the car, so. Oh, it's um, just one of those cool little elements. Little battery relocation to do there. Yep. Uh, what's the diff you're running? Ah, uh, factory diff. Factory diff. I don't know how long, but we're running factory diff. Yep. For as long as we can, eh? Yeah, just with a set of Bilstein rear shocks in it. And, yeah. um, yeah, some blocks in there and, yeah. I don't, I don't give the car a hard time it'll never get raced it'll never get done anything and it's just yeah nice little cruiser i put engines in the back of them and deliver them in there and yeah yeah, yeah. That's so you've you've brought this corolla home how was it when you got it home yeah it was pretty good it um i got it put on a truck the guy delivered down and i was still working out of my father's factory when it got delivered and um yeah i was pretty surprised yeah turned up on an old set of sigma pepper pops the G gsr wheels yeah, yeah. i thought i was on a i thought i was on a winner there i thought i was going to make more money on the wheels i was going to say on the I was, yeah yeah no no one wanted them oh no. really and they've given away to another corolla guy to really? jason ginn with the orange one yeah. and uh yeah the, the original plan was to put stockies on it just stockies black rims dress rim but yeah then the, the ssrs popped so up and good, yeah that's where it went yeah we've done a little bit of welding not too much on it and um, yeah, so I did most of the rush repairs myself, mm -hmm. uh, or a mate of mine came in and welded them up, and then yeah, we gave it to a, uh, a guy called Jace Martin that used to work at Two Sus, and he blew some paint on it in his spare time, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, he's uh, he done a pretty good job. It's yeah. a killer job, man. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Is he running a shop or is he just doing them? As... Nah, he was just doing a fill-in sort of sideline gig. We we done a bit of a contra deal. Mm -hmm. I'll do his motor. He painted the car, and yeah, it, uh, he, he he done yeah full credit to him. He done a good job. Beautiful yeah. man. Yeah. Love that. All right, and, and cutting to the motor stuff, we, we, we'll do that talking about it before. Um, let's go Let's go back to the start. Yep. Tell us about your first car. Okay, so I had a KE 34-door Corolla. Yep. It was my first car on my P's. Um, and obviously I spent a lot of time hanging around my father's mechanical shop. Mm -hmm. um, so we bought that, I think it was off one of his customers at the time. Uh, it was a buy one, get one free deal uh, they don't exist nowadays no um, so we did that and at the time there was some some dodgy panel beaters in his complex and we we dropped the car off until on a friday night we went to uh Tukley ski race and we came back sunday night and there was this car that was mustard yellow when we left and it was glowing white and it was beautiful and um yeah it was it was my great first car it was it was yeah. fantastic um mind you i only had my license for probably two months before i lost my lost my license uh, in the corolla so, in the corolla Which is that, yep. you're working hard yep. you're really trying yeah I, I got done for speeding <laughs> um lost it in one go four points mm -hmm. um so i sold that car and in the meantime there was a another lady uh, an old lady in my father's complex that had a one owner k32 door um so we got that and that like had the original york receipt or york motors receipt in the glove box one one Full original owner mm. um, so my father and I done a full rest on that car mm. um, and it was it was beautiful like it got proper paint job I built a nice 5k for it interior done and, and surprisingly like interior is done and this car was done by the same guy back then um, yeah everything's done on it yeah it was a nice car it was you know we took it to Toyota Nationals in 98 um, and then I took it to Toyota Nationals in 99 and we brought home a bag full of trophies and one nice. best modified of the car and yeah. yeah then two weeks later I wrote it off so yeah come on uh, <laughs> Dish the dirt, what were you doing? Just doing skids? Um, or... <laughs> no, surprisingly, they tried to blame me for drag racing. I wasn't. We just took off from the set of lights and, and I was on Kissing Point Road and I come around a corner and um, mm -hmm. it just the back just skipped out and mm -hmm. yeah, I just put it straight in the telegraph pole. Mate, you think about how many trucks run that road, dropping yeah. diesel all day, they're so yeah. slippery. So yeah. I think everyone thought I was racing. It definitely, you know, definitely wasn't. My father definitely thought I was. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah but it, it was a culture shock, you know, to, to see a mate in the car. Um, that had been knocked out in the crash. Yeah, um, I bet. Yeah. So it, it turned me off car, not turned me off cars, turned me off having a fast car on the street. Mm -hmm. um, you know, ironic that 
yeah, I build 2,000, 1,000 horsepower engines yes. every day of the week. Yep. Yep. Um, but yeah, I just turned away from me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, I parked the idea of cars myself for a while and mm -hmm. yeah, concentrate on other things. But um, yeah, it was a good car, but yeah, I got bitten by the bug and I wanted to have something that was yeah, pretty cool and mm -hmm. yeah, nice little sort of run around. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I love that, man. So, uh, so why the wagon? What, what what's made you choose a wagon? It's different. Like, yeah. You don't see, you know, you see a lot of K more K thirty six two door wagons around. It's very rare to see a four door wagon. Mm -hmm. around. I want to be able to chuck my kids in the car and and you know my I've got three kids. I've got a, a thirteen year old son, a ten year old daughter, and a four year old daughter. Mm -hmm. um, my my thirteen year old son is is becoming hands on with my business, as in uh, not on the tools, but some of the laser stuff we've got going on and stuff. My daughter thinks she's my marketing manager and. So she wants to be able to come to some, some events and sell some of our merchandise out the back of it nice, and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. so the wagon was the ideal car for to incorporate her into it a little bit. Mm. Um, she she can jump in there and you know, we'll go to some events and pop the boot and have some of our t-shirts there because you know, we've got a bit of a strong merchandise sale mm. type thing. Mm. Um, so yeah, that just involves them as well, you know? So I love that. Man. Yeah. Yeah, sick. All right. I th I, but every time I'm asking this question lately, I'm not getting good answers because I think this is going to be it. But if I gave you an unlimited budget, what would this Corolla look like? Not far off this. Mm. Yeah. Just 10,000. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's happening. I've got, a, I've got a block sitting in Queensland. And as soon as the borders open up, um, one of my one of my tuner mates there is bringing it down for me. So I do have another another block to make it happen. And I'm going to build an alloy rod at the street engine. Forklift uh, motor again? Forklift motor, yeah. yep, yep. Are they a better so, block? or um, just... No, it's just they're, they were more popular in the forklifts yep, and the light aces. Yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't change much on the car. Um, yeah, obviously, uh, I'm limited to what I can do. I can't put big diffs on it because I want 13 inch wheels. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's it's a catch 22 situation, but I'm not after the horsepower. The, the whole 10,000 RPM thing is just because people say you can't do it. I wanted to do it. I yeah. don't need 9,500 out of it like it does now, <laughs> but I, I set a goal of nine and I set a goal of 100 horsepower at the back wheels and we, you know, we, we, we blew that out of the water. Mm -hmm. um, so the 10,000 is just another goal. So if you give me the money, I'll make the 10,000 happen. Yeah. Sick. <laughs> Sick. Yeah. But I reckon you'll get good money for this, like if you pull this motor out as it sits. Yeah, I think there's know, a market there for it. it. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, they're strong in New Zealand. That, that motor is still quite popular over there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I wanted to keep it period specific, hence why we didn't even upright the motor. We kept it laying on the slant. Mm -hmm. A lot of them over there do upright them and stuff. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah, probably the only thing I would change if I had more money would be a better gearbox because that'll eventually break. Mm -hmm. uh, what what box is in it? Just a K50. Yep. 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 So, okay. So yeah. what would you go to the super box? What would you? Yeah, the W50 mm -hmm. or the T50 probably. Mm -hmm. uh, T50 with removable bell housing, and that way, if we ever did do an upright, not that I want to, but if we ever did. I can cut and shut and move the belt bell yeah. housing and do it. But yeah, I, I, I like it. I like the idea of the, the K motor. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's different by today's standard. It's different because it's easier to drop a 4AGE in it or an SR20 or mm -hmm. some of that. But yeah, can't all be the same. Can't be the yeah. same, mate. Yeah. If it was easy, it wouldn't be any fun. <laughs> yep. All right, so I've bought you this factory unit. Yep. You got the roller parked there. What other cars are we parking in the factory unit with it? Uh, would be another K, K series Corolla. Mm -hmm. I, I have a have an ambition to build a K30 again, um, two door, but I would like to put a 2.5 Lexus V6 motor in it. Um, yes, and do okay. A, do a cross ram injection manifold on it and pop the bonnet and have a carbon fiber airbox and make it look like you're looking at a mini V8 supercar under the bonnet, but full original on the outside. Sick. Mustard brown, Venetians, tiny wheels, but just the bonnet be the wow factor. Yeah. yeah so that's yeah. definitely. That would be definitely the, the other car. Mm -hmm. uh, and far that, then it'd be a yeah, it'd be a Dodge Ram or something like that, or a, yeah, yeah, F one fifty or something. Okay, like that. yeah, something nice. big and mean. And Why chunky. not? Yep. Yeah, yeah. All right, now I want, I want more. So you've got you got the Corolla. You've you've built the KE thirty two door. What else are you gonna What else are you gonna park in this garage? What else are you gonna have? Um, would know. you have a race boat? What would you do? Nah, I lost interest in race nah. boats. I'd love to find time to get back to my go-karting eventually. Okay. Um, so I do still have a fair few go-karts there. So um, it's just, I did put business as my focus. Mm -hmm. um, and now, you know, now I'm breaking away from, not breaking away from the business, but I found my, my work-life balance again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so now I have a, a, a very good bond and a strong, passionate, good time with my son mountain bike riding. So yeah, Sick. so my factory would be an indoor mountain bike track because that's what he would want. That's so, right. I yeah, love yeah. that, like a yep. pump track yep. and other exactly. stuff going on. Exactly. Yeah. You put it in here, you could have it go up high and yep. then come back down. Yep. That'd be bad. So that would be that would be the goal. The cars, I say, the cars are, I like them, but um, 
nothing beats family time. Sick, yeah. man. Where, yeah. where, are you, where are you riding? I'm leaving this in. Where are you riding? Like, are you going uh, up the hill? Where do you go? So we go knapsack usually every Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we go wild. We go OMV up at Hornsby. Mm -hmm. I took him to Stromlo in Canberra the other week. Oh, we've, done a, we've done a training course down there. Love um, that. So we're gonna hit Stromlo again in another week or two. Do you do the shuttle? Do you pay for the shuttles? We didn't then because we done uh, we done a three hour coaching clinic. Mm -hmm. So they made us ride wherever we had to ride. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, next time we're booking the shuttles to go straight to the top because with the man. coaching clinic we only got to sort of see part of it. And he wants he wants the top. So oh yeah yeah yeah. 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 But on a spare Sunday, you throw the kids in the car. Beautiful sunny day. Where would you go driving? Where where's your favourite road? Um, I would probably go to Wiseman's Ferry. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. All there. It'll be a, an unenjoyable event driving down there with the suspension. It's scrubby, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll definitely I'll definitely head up there. Yeah. Um, go down there, get some lunch at the pub down there. Yeah. Cruise on home. Yeah. Um, yeah. Either that or. Yeah, it's not far, but go to Windsor. I like going to Windsor at the, the boat yeah. ramp there. Get some fish and chips and yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. it's uh, like when, when I beat, when I went, we went for just a drive, you've really got to watch the road and pick your lines, which is, it's like skiing. Yep. You know, yep. you've, it's, which is, it's immersive. It's, you're right into it. I love yep. that. You know, like, yeah. It's like driving like go cars, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah. yeah. That's it for Troy's mad little Corolla. Troy, thanks for time. No worries. Thanks for having us. Legend. That wraps up this episode. Thanks so much for watching. Our uh, race car driver for the day. Rev matched it, look at him go. He treats it better than I do. He's a good man. Where are we going? Mark, Yeah. you're driving the Jemmy, mate. I need you thinking the whole time, what would Rita do? Come on. You can overtake him, overtake him. I'll try to, Mark. Come on, Mark. <laughs> Come on. Go, Jimmy, go! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.